From Bingham to BYU and now to the NFL, he's our guest here in the KSL studio. Harvey Longy joins us. Harvey, thanks for coming in. Hey. Congratulations on Thank all the success. I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm having flashbacks to your sophomore year in high school. I'm interviewing you as a 15-year-old, this immature but talented player. What a journey it's been for you. How would you describe your journey from that time when you became, were launched in the spotlight to now? Um, it's, it's been a crazy journey, but um, I wouldn't trade it for anything, and it's been fun. Um, a lot of twists and turns, different schools, but I'm here now and getting ready for the next, um, the next step, and gosh, it's, um, it's been a fun ride. You, not only have you been on local media, but there, there's a documentary in Football We Trust. Your, your yeah. family was featured in that. How has it been for you to go through that and have everything that you've done in your career scrutinized and, and basically public? I feel like now it's more normal. Yeah. Um, technology nowadays, everything's on, yeah. on video, everything's on camera. Um, but back then it was a little, it was still a little new. Yeah. Um, a little weird, you know, every time the camera came out, my friends and stuff would, they would act a little different, or I even acted a little different sometimes. And nowadays, when a camera comes out, everyone's like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> um, but it's back then, it was just a little bit uh, different than now. But now, it's, it's been normal, and it's, uh, I feel like it's just a, uh, another journal for me to look back at um, of things that have happened with me and my family back in the past and where I'm at now, so. The crossroads for you seem to be serving an LDS mission and you came back and you were, you were a different person. And also while you're on your mission, you made the decision to transfer from Utah to BYU. And I've never had a chance to really get into that with you. What was behind that decision and what motivated you to make that change? Well, you know, just like all of us, we, we go through our immature years and it wasn't anything um, the University of Utah was great. I had a year there, a uh, little bit over a year there. There was nothing bad. It was always good. Um, I just felt leaving school early and going to college and stuff, I just felt like uh, I was a little too immature and uh, went there as a starting running back and sort of started falling under other guys and stuff and just wasn't really uh, doing things that I knew I could be doing and um, decided to uh, take a break and get my mindset right, go back into uh, um, the church. And I just felt, you know what, I'm going to switch over to BYU. I know who I want to be. I want to be a good father, a good brother, a good son. I want to find my wife. I want to get married. Um, I want to go to the NFL. And if you look at the statistics, Polynesians, they don't really get drafted high as running backs, you know? They don't get a, a huge shot. Polynesians are more likely DNs, linebackers. So I'm like, if the NFL's in my, in my plans in the future, I gotta switch. So I did the switch. The very first thing I did, I sat down with Coach Menhall and asked if I can be a part of his team, and then second, if I can play defense. Me coming back from a mission, having that structure, the honor code and all those things, I just felt like it was just better for me to stay at, um, at that uh, spiritual level that I was at from um, leaving my mission. And you can get that anywhere, you know. You can have that at Utah, Utah State, USC, Stanford. I just felt for me personally, I felt like BYU um, could help me out. And you look back on your BYU career, especially your last year, uh, with the coaching change, Kalani Sataki comes in, yeah. um, different coaches. How did that last year at BYU help prepare you for the NFL? First, yeah, Coach Whittingham, he helped me. You know, the University of Utah helped a lot you know their program is is great they they run a their strength and conditioning program is awesome yeah. and moving that to Mendenhall Mendenhall was a just a genius in football just taught me so many concepts also um, the type of person that um, I wanted to be and know I can be off the field and then with Kalani the last year of just loving the moment and loving the guys that you get to share this moment with and using that love for the sport and for your teammates to better yourself at your position as a player off the field and I can take things from each coach and each program that I was a part of to to adapt to the NFL life. It's all brought you to this point now. The draft is almost here. Yeah. You never know what to believe about what you're reading, what you're hearing before the draft, but I'm hearing your stock is rising. 
That's got to be flattering. What are you hearing and what positive things are going on right now that give you that indication <laughs> that things are going your way in, the, in this process? I try not to hear. You yeah. Know? I was just like, gosh. You know, my, <laughs> Sorry to bring it up. Oh, no, it's fine. <laughs> you know, um, everyone looks at all 32 teams. For me, I just look for one team. I hope one guy and all the, out of all these uh, NFL teams, if one guy in, in one team um, likes the way I play and is willing to to uh, convince the other guys on his staff to to believe in me and give me a shot, I would I would take with I would take that and and try my hardest for them and that program and uh, to help that program become better. What are the emotions going to be like for you and your family once you achieve this goal that you've had for so many years? It'll be fun. It'll be awesome. Um, I feel like for the whole family, it, it'll be a time for all of us to just to celebrate, but also to um, give hope to my younger siblings and um, my family members to know that, hey, uh, I wanted to be an NFL player and um, I got my shot and hopefully as this process goes, I get on a team and that gives hope. If Harvey, you know, out of all of us, Harvey <laughs> wanted to be a football player and he made it all the way there. Like, why not? Why not me? And finally, in general, speaking to all the kids out there that look up to Harvey Longy, yeah. what is your message to them? What would you tell them if they want to become like you someday? I would say surround yourself with, with people that will, that will push you to be the person you want to be. Um, growing up, I felt like I could have always, I could have surrounded myself better. Um, my, I could have surrounded myself with people that could have helped me. I get here um, and not saying that they were bad or good I felt like my supporting my the people that support me now are great and the people that I surround myself are great now but as a kid and growing up through middle school and high school just surround yourself with people that that love you and really care about you and really want you to be successful. Well, Harvey, it's been a pleasure to watch yeah. you become the player and the person you are today. Hey. Watch you go through all this process. Yeah. Congratulations on all your success. Everyone in the state of Utah, BYU Nation is going to be pulling for you at hey. the draft. Thanks so much, Harvey. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you. All right.